You always do. I like that. That's, that's good. Um, but uh, he, um, Brother Delman said, come on, come and sing my song for me after all. And uh, I really like that song. So we're glad to be back and, and uh, thankful that the Lord is still alive, that he's doing well. Amen. And uh, we're thankful. When I was a kid, there's a church down in Caswell. And uh, shortly after you passed the flea market, Brother Phil, it's on the right-hand side. And they always had those big signs out there, be prepared to meet thy God and all these different things. And, and uh, I remember as a kid, you couldn't even get in the parking lot, Brother Steve, and they would be parked down the road and up the, I mean, just, you couldn't even get the place, you know. And I was recently down in Tennessee, and four cars in the parking lot. Yeah. Ain't that a shame? It's not just, a, it's not just us. Uh, but we're glad to be back tonight. And, uh, uh, don't know who's gonna uh, be doing what tonight, but let's just sing for a little bit and let the Lord know that we appreciate him. Let's give a little bit of praise and for all that he's done and, and uh, for all that he's gonna do. And the Bible says that the, uh, the coming of the Lord is nigh even at the door. That means, Brother Joe, it's only four inches away. Right? The, the, the door, what they call the threshold, or four inches. That's just how close it is for the Lord to come back. Amen. Let's play uh, page 240 in the red book. When the trumpet of the Lord sounds at night, Mitchell was a funny kid. You could whip Mitchell. 
I'm talking about one of them old grandma whoopings with a switch, but you could light him on fire. Brother Steve, he wouldn't shed a tear. But that night he got saved, there was 27 got saved that night on Thursday night evangelistic night at Kentucky Park. And when I went up there, Brother uh, Jack Wilson said, come here, look at this. And Brother Phil, there was 27 on the altar that night that got saved. Every single one of them stood up and said that the Lord had saved them and mentioned one of them. Amen. And he was crying like a baby. Amen. Uh, how many of you know that song when they'll say, it was on a Monday, somebody, and then they'll stand up. Every single time, Brother Terry, that I've been in church with my son Mitchell, and they're like, it was on a Thursday, he comes right to his feet. Amen. And um, I don't know, I think that Mitchell would be uh, a good deacon. Mitchell's a very honest man and very, uh, very upright person. I just wish he would get in, amen, a little bit more. He could definitely be, I believe he'd be good in the service of the Lord, but I just can't talk him into it. I'm sorry, what number did you say? 382. Amen. But we're so sort of glad to be here tonight. And um,
you know, I was thinking they want to do away with these songs, you know. They don't want they don't want anything to do about the blood. You yeah. want to take away our songs, you want to take our song books, you want to take our Bible, but you know what, one of these days, it's not going to happen because uh, Jesus is coming back and we'll have a new song. He said, we'll, he said we'll be singing up there a song that the angels cannot sing. And I'm glad, but one day, Brother Ray, one of these days, I don't know if it could be today, it could be tomorrow, it said, it doesn't say in the Bible when he's coming back, but I know my deep in my heart that it, he's coming back one of these days. You, you may think I'm crazy and stuff like that, but you know what? I don't care because I know what Jesus is coming. He, yeah. he could come today. He could come she tomorrow. Could. She could. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. I was telling you guys the other day, I, I know for a fact it's, it's been on the news that they have legislation right now in the state of California. If you own a Bible, you'll have to get rid of it. Amen. It's, it's coming, Brother Gary. Whether we like it or not. Amen. Sure is. You know, the Lord said to store up the word where? Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. Um, next Sunday night, we may have to meet at Brother Terry's house. Following Sunday morning, Brother Gary, we might be at your house. I mean, we, this may be what it would come to. We might have to sneak around and have church. Amen. Or do whatever the, whatever the thing plan on doing. But, um... The Bible says that good shall be called evil and evil shall be called good. And we're going to be definitely the ones that are going to be considered the evil ones. Amen. And you know, if it gets that bad, I hope it does come back. Yeah, really. Yeah. I know I've heard it preached all my life. I've heard people say, Brother Joy, that I hope the Lord don't come back. i got a brother-in-law that ain't saved. He promised me he's coming to church next Sunday. He promised me. I'd really like to see him get saved. But what did John say there in Revelation? Even so, come, you know, even so. I mean, it's it's going to happen, Brother Steve, whether we like it or not. Amen. Now, I don't want to miss it. Do you? Are you here tonight? And I don't want to miss it. Amen. You know, and all of your children and your everybody that you know, I don't want nobody to miss it. But I don't want to think they don't they don't want to hear it. Amen. And just. But, uh, Jesus said, though they forbear not, I'm telling you anyway, amen. <laughs>
Anybody got one? We'll get ready to turn Dixie loose here in a minute. <laughs> Service for uh, for Brother Delmer and uh, for anybody else that would have um, something to do for the Lord on that day. Uh, it's going to be a real sad day for me. It already is, but I don't. Dave, I was so mad I was spitting nails. 
Mm-hmm. Going over with 80 degrees outside, you know, back then they have air conditioning in the van. He's out there to change the tire. Didn't go a mile. And there was a real bad fatal accident. He said, I'd have been right in the middle of that. And he said, I got out of that old van. He didn't see Delbert with this. What do you think he did, Bill? Yes, he did. He said, I repented. Lord, forgive me for complaining. I'm thankful that I got that flat tire. Amen. And so, all right, Pixie, come.
Amen. 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 So many people have to get out there and I kind of call it that Tarzan pump their chest and tell them who you are. You don't have to tell nobody who you are. Sure. Your action, your talk, and your walk will show the world just exactly Amen. what you are. And how that there was a song this young girl used to sing, well, she ain't young no more, she's a little bit older than me. And I know everybody knows it about your life, it's the only Bible some people read. And you know what? I thought, how if you get out there and you claim to be something and you can't hold up to the part of what you claim, you not only destroyed yourself amongst some people, but you know what? They ain't got no confidence in Amen. what you talk about Amen. because they know there ought to be something different about you. Right. Now, I'm not as Bible read as some of you men are. I ain't a preacher. That ain't my job. That's true. But you know what? I know the Bible talks about how it called you out of the world. Right. We're supposed to be a separated people. Yep. We're a peculiar people. Right. And stuff of like that, you know what? If they want to say, well, you're peculiar, you're an eyeball. That's all right with me. <laughs> it is. It's all right with me because then I must be doing something right. I want to live my life to where Amen. not only when you see me out, but maybe I don't see you, you can know by my That's actions true. that I'm a child of God. But you know what? I want to know in my heart that I've got confidence in what I've got. So whenever I go to meet the Lord, it don't matter what you all say. When I stand before the Lord, I'll stand before the Lord on my merits. Sure. And nobody yeah. else's. Sure. And you know what? You can't sugarcoat it for them and say, well, I didn't this and I didn't that. It don't no matter. Because when the Lord opens that book, it's all right there. Yeah. It's all yeah. recorded. And there will be no shenanigans. There will be no the sweet talking and trying to talk it to where, well, now, Lord, he was kind of like this. No, he ain't. Right here he is. He ain't going to fool nobody. The only person you really truly fool is yourself. And that's a dangerous place to get to. And I want to live a life to where I've got confidence in myself. You guys just remember me. I got one. Some songs are hard to sing, you don't get them there. Do you know how it feels? You're sucked into mission, you're still a small voice. Just keep dismissing, do you know how it feels? You come inside, you think that's for you. Bought a cross, don't you die? Do you know how it feels? You have to surrender. Have a sin washed away, never to remember and know that it made it good to know how it feels. And how does it feel to know you're a child of a king, your every part, owns everything. Start of love, how 
Oh, mm-hmm. 
Yes, amen. Number 16, but in, and you might be able to blame this on the heat today. I don't know. <laughs> Beginning with verse number 19. Luke 16 and 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, yes, very amen. sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Mm -hmm. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip his tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Amen. I am tormented in this flame. Amen. But Abraham 
and said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he's comforted, thou art tormented. He said, All this between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would come from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that they that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, I have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. He said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went from went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, Neither would they be persuaded that one rose from the dead. His power is. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in the house of God tonight. We thank you for each one to come out this way, Lord. Father, we praise you, Lord, for the fellowship, and Lord, for the prospect of gathering and worshiping and looking forward to that day of your coming. Lord, help us, Lord, to prepare ourselves and those around us, Lord. God, to do your will. To let this world know that, Father, there is a place called hell. And though they don't want to hear about it, Lord, it's a reality. Amen. And many of them, Lord, if they fail to accept Christ, quicken our steps, embolden us, and give us courage, Lord, to tell the truth. Amen. When they don't want to be heard, Amen. we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you, Amen. Mentioned a little earlier about this rich man. You'll notice the rich man does not. We don't have his name. I think that's on purpose tonight, amen? amen. Uh, it could be anybody. He was no more not who he was, but what he had. Yeah. Amen. And how he lived. Yeah. And he had the thing. There's people today, uh, I don't know their names, but I've heard about them and what they have and the way they live. And they even make shows, lifestyles of the rich and famous. Yes. And, uh, but it's funny how they all tend to, no matter how educated or how rich they get without God, they always tend to go toward the sinful yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. They indulge themselves in the pleasure of sin. They get themselves drunken. They overinflame their senses. But they don't have any common sense. Amen. Yeah. They can't see the need around them. People can be starving. And they Amen. They a clap when they donate $100 and they're Preacher sitting on 100 billion. You billion. Know, uh, this world has just gone plain crazy. Amen. Amen. But uh, one of these days, uh, there's going to be a reckoning day. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, this man, no doubt, he was missed when he died because there was people that had to clothe this man. He fared sumptuously. Somebody had to feed him. Amen. Somebody had to dress him. And somebody had to provide all these goods. And when he died, he wasn't buying anything else anymore. Exactly. Amen. Amen. And, uh, but they did have him a funeral. The Bible says he did die and he was buried. Amen. So he did have a funeral. No doubt they talked about how they were going to miss him, Brother Bill. And, uh, you know, it's much like today, uh, the so-called preachers of today will talk about how good so-and-so was every time somebody died. They might have died in a drug uh, deal and got shot or killed somebody else, but they were a good person. They're in a better place, according to them. Uh, not according to God, or not according to what the Lord told me tonight, amen. amen. But he died as well as the beggar. Now the beggar, the Bible says, had a name. Aren't you glad God knows us by name tonight, amen? amen. I'm glad he knows me more by yes, name than what I've done. Because God knew about what I'd done before, he, uh, before I knew him. Right. But he knew me, amen. amen. And I'm glad we're on a name basis with the Lord, amen. amen. One part, the Bible says they talked about all these things they did for Jesus. And all these things, that did we not do these many miracles in thy name? And Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. Right. And he didn't even deny the things they'd done in his name. Do you notice that? There's people who can't make merchandise in the name of Jesus. Right. Yeah. Millions of dollars are being raised in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know what? A lot of them don't know Jesus. Right. Right. Not the Amen. Jesus of the Bible today. Amen. Amen. Well, but you know, Lazarus died. And the Bible says the angels carried him into Abraham's bosom. Amen. And the rich man, the Bible so said, died and in hell lift up his eyes. And I like what Brother Steve always said. It doesn't say lifted, it says lift up. That's an ongoing action. Amen. Amen. He's in a place 
where he's still lifting up his eyes. He's still begging for that drink of water. Nobody hears him, but that's what he wants. He, he's, I believe hell for those who, as I said earlier, they've been acquainted to all these things in life, and they leave here with those addictions. Amen. They leave here wanting that next fix. They leave here wanting that, that next drink. Amen. They leave here wanting that next whatever it is that they indulged in this side that they were able to fulfill with their flesh, they get to hell they have no way of doing that anymore. On top of that, it's a hot place. Yes, amen. On top of that, there's anguish and ang everything around them is going on. Yeah. They talked about a fire earlier and it got me thinking, you know, I've seen scenes in some of these live programs and that where a fire would break out and there'd be a parent or a brother or a mom or a dad and they it took five policemen to hold back this one little woman because she was trying to get to that kid in that car. And you know what? And if they would let her go, she'd have went through the fire to get to him. And then, but they wouldn't let her go because they knew she, she couldn't do anything but harm herself. No yeah. But why can't they get that urgency now? Amen. Hell Amen. Of surety for many of them. Amen. Amen. Uh, judgment is coming. What does it take for us to get an actual a vision of hell? If we had a vision of hell, then we have a, a greater boldness, Brother Dave, to tell that person yeah. about the reality of hell and about the reality of a judgment instead of waiting until it's too late. Amen. Amen. Because there's a finality about hell. The only time you hear about anyone getting out of hell is when they're standing in front of the white throne judgment Amen. and their names aren't found in the Lamb's Book of Life and they're cast into the lake of fire. Amen. Now they might change locations. Yes, amen. It ain't a better view, amen. Right. It ain't a better place, amen. amen. And I'm telling you today, these people that want to talk about this second chance stuff, friend, they got it wrong. And God got it right the first amen. time. Amen. They ain't going to have been there that he's getting out of there. Amen. That's exactly right, amen. amen. And I, I was thinking how this world tries in their theatrics. Every time they talk about people coming up from the dead, they look like some gory zombie and stuff like that. You know, I, I just wonder if they ain't trying to mock the resurrection, Brother Gary. We try to talk, talk about a resurrection, how wonderful it's going to be when Jesus sounds that trumpet and we come out of the grave and there's going to be a meeting. Well, they got to look like some gory thing. Who would want that if they all they ever hear and see it, man? But I'm glad it ain't going to be that way. The Bible says that which is sown is different than that which is coming up. Man. Yeah, uh, if you sow a grain of wheat, you're not looking for that old dead grain to come. You're looking for a whole new plant, amen? Amen. amen. You sow this body in corruption, it's coming up Corrupt. incorrupted right. because of Christ. Amen. 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 Lazarus was carried by the angels. Yes. He was in a place of comfort. But at that point, and I believe, and, and, and if you differ with me on this, that's all right. I'm not trying to teach a whole lot of theology or anything like that. I'm not a theology person. To us, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> not much education here. <laughs> but I believe at that time, Jesus had not come to the cross. And them that had died went to that place called Abraham's bosom. Now, there was a paradise side of it, the Bible says, but there was also the side for them who were going to be facing judgment. Amen? Paradise side, they couldn't go because of the way it had been made. It was a holy place. Yes. And so when Abe Lazarus was there, he was on the side of comfort in paradise. But there was a gulf between them and that place where that rich man was. People want to call that a parable. I don't believe it's a parable. No. I believe that is an actual view yeah. into the hell itself. Yes. Yeah. And if you don't believe that, that's all right. right. But I'm just telling you, God never used parables where he gave them names. Amen? Right. Lazarus had a name. Abraham was a real individual that we know right. about. And when Lazarus was being comforted, that rich man was able, he had his faculties about him. See, a lot of people think when they get to hell, well, I don't know it anyways. You're going to know it. Yes. Amen. He had he could see, he was thirsty, and he could feel the heat. Amen. And not only that, he got over there and he said, Would you just send Lazarus? Just dip his fingers just some more, just a little bit. That's all I need. He couldn't even get that. His appetites were present, Brother Dave. Amen. Still had an appetite. There's some people, they can't get enough of something. And it becomes just something that becomes their whole focus, Brother Gary. Imagine not being able to fulfill that, you know. Yeah, I'll be sitting at home sometimes, I'll get up and, you know, I, 
I finally got to get to that refrigerator. I know where that ice cream's at. <laughs> I didn't want to get up off that nice soft couch, but you know what? Finally, that appetite overtook me. Yeah. Now I'm looking at the bottom of an empty ice cream box, and I'm thinking, uh-oh. I'm going to pay for this one. <laughs> but you know what? You're not able to fulfill that. No. That rich man, he never got that. that, that That's right. He never did. But then he got something else. He, he realized he not only had that, but he had a memory. There we go. And he had some concern. He said, okay, my self, my self is unfixed. I've got five brothers. He started getting concerned with five brothers. All the things he had, if we could get them now, how much better would we be? Amen. If we can see hell as being real, mm -hmm. if we can see hell as being as awful as, as the Bible says, and not trying to add anything to it, just believe what God says. It's outer darkness, it's a place of groaning and gnashing of teeth, it's a place of torment, and it's forever. Amen. If we can get that down in our heart and realize when we look at people without Jesus, that's where they're headed. Amen. That's right. It would help us. Amen. Amen. He got concerned. He said, I've got five brothers. Send him Lazarus. He became a missionary. He, he was missionary minded for the first time in his life. Yeah. He couldn't even make it out to the mailbox to give Lazarus those crumbs. Lazarus was at his door or at his gate. The Bible says, desiring the crumbs. I don't even know they ever got them. We never read of a rich man coming out and giving Lazarus a plate, do we? Mm -mm. But he was there and that's where he died. But now, he can't get nobody else. He wanted to send Lazarus. And Abraham tells him, he says, they've got Abraham, they've got Moses and the prophets. You see, right away he says, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went back from the dead, they would believe. Abraham told him, he says, if they don't believe Moses and the prophets, neither will they believe. And he rose from the dead. Amen, brother. If they don't believe this Bible, if they don't trust the Word of God, they're not going to see Jesus as we see him, brother. Sure. Amen. Jesus rose from the dead. But today, when you hear Jesus, you've got to ask, who's Jesus is being preached? What's being preached? Amen. Amen. Because they just take our words and give them different meanings. I had a dream one time that my brother died, and I was standing, looking down into his casket, and I was trying to do something about it, and I could. Father, I know my brother's saved. He's, he's professed to be saved. That's between him and the Lord, but, and he's been here a few times for church, but he don't go to church all that often sometimes. I know he's had his accident and things, but I love him. I don't want any of my family to die and go to hell. But I remember how, how I felt, I felt helpless. I couldn't change the situation. Sure. I couldn't do anything to better the situation. The time for action is today, amen? Yeah. But when we get the church built up, that, you know what? We may never have much more than what we got. If we're waiting for something else to happen, we're waiting too late. Because people are dying each and every day. Yes. And hell's the reality. I see them every day. I have people come by me each weekend and get to talk to them. And uh, little bit by little bit, you begin to build a relationship. And you get, begin to open up a little bit and share what you're about. And people, I like coming to your spot. You guys are always nice to us and, and this and that. And you start sharing a little bit of things and, and you get a chance to talk about Jesus. Amen. And I'm hoping. Maybe if one day I'll get to lead one of them to Jesus. Oh, Wouldn't that man? I, I love praying for people. Had a man come by today. He's got to have a uh, 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 surgery out of his aorta. He was telling me about it. I asked him how he was doing. And I said, well, when's your surgery? He said, August 9th. I said, we'll be praying for you. We're going to make a matter of prayer. He just looked at me for a long time. <laughs> he goes, I appreciate that. Really would. He's an older gentleman. But I'm thinking, there's people out here, Brother Steve, without a prayer. 
Yeah. They're heading to a place called hell. Yeah. And they don't understand just how how awful it is. Amen. And, and God has given his very best. You know, God gave his son, he gave his life. And how many others have followed God to the death to get this book and get this word out to the masses? Right. They got the information. They're making their own choices still. Amen. Amen. And they don't fully they, they don't fully understand the consequences are going to be more. Mom and dad can't fix it, Steve. That's right. I mean, if Caleb doesn't give his heart to Jesus, Pepa can't get in there and fix it as Amen. much as I want to. That's you right. know what I'm saying? And we've got to give them a not only the word, but we've got to give them something that they can trust in. Amen. They got to see a life that backs up what this word says as much as we can yeah. so they can see that this isn't a joke to us. I've seen kids looking and, and talk about, the, oh yeah, my parents are going to church. You know, and they laugh about it because they know when they get home how they act at home and it's so different, Brother Phil. It can't be that way for the Christian, amen? Yeah. Kids got to see some consistency there in our life. Yeah. And know that it's really been a change. And it means something to us, amen? Yeah. Amen. There's times when I get tired in body, Brother Joy, and I'm just not as youthful as I used to be. But you know what? When I can, I still want to do what God would have me to do. Amen. And, and I, I know that there's going to come a day, Brother Gary, when I'm not able to go. But while I'm able, I want to go. Yes, amen. I want to do what God would have me do today because we don't know that that ain't going to change tomorrow. My brother didn't know that day coming down in 50 a couple years ago. That was going to be one of the last times he took a walk. Or took a step without pain before that car cut him off and then stopped for a garage sale and he ran right into it with his motorcycle. Bigger than I am, but he's not been able to take a step without pain. He can take three or four steps on a walker. That's as far as he goes. But his life changed just like that. Yeah, right. friend, in a blink of an eye, they're leaving this world. Yeah. Young and old. Amen. And hell is a reality for them. And if God would help us to get a Get a vision of that to where we can see. And Phil, I know we get embarrassed by it sometimes, but you know, sometimes we got to cut right through and say, hey, let me ask you about your soul. Do you know Jesus? Amen. Do you know about this Savior Amen. That, I'm, that I'm serving? You, you say you saw a difference. Let me tell you about the difference. Amen. It's nothing to do that I did. Nothing good that I've done. God come and found me. Amen. He comes looking for a lost sinner and found me and knew where I was and knew what to do with me. Amen. That's what they got to hear. Amen. I know that there's a change, but the change came Amen. because there was a decision made. Yes. That God Amen. Put faith in our heart. He said He gave each one of us a measure of faith. And when I deposited that faith in Christ and I repented of my sin, God yes, has been a change in me, amen. And He makes me want better things for me. I want what He wants, Brother Gary. Yes. And when I come short, it displeases yes, me. Yes, amen. Bless the Lord. It my heart when I sin. If there's a place I can go, <laughs> yes, amen. Bless, bless, bless the Lord. Be faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us, amen. 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 And I'm so glad for the cleansing. So glad that God has thrown us away, amen. Where I can't Yes, God. amen. So bless the Lord. We break. We dry it up. And he puts us back on the wheel. That's good for you. Sure. Fix it. This man Amen. has not had a second chance in mm -mm. 2,000 years. Amen. He will face the white throne judgment and he will end up in the lake of fire. Amen. In spite of all he owned and all he had. In spite of whatever the preacher or anybody else said Amen. about him that day. They're not going to change. Was written in God's book. Amen. Bless the Lord. I'm so thankful that God let us, He gave us the truth. He didn't have to. Amen. At any time, even Moses, you know, heard God say, let me just start over. And Moses pleaded for him, didn't he? But God knew what was in Moses' heart. Sometimes He develops that love for us. Sometimes, but how can you love that person? How can you love that drug addict? How can you walk into that house they knowing they're doing what they're doing and knowing that it's your job to try to come between them in a bad thing? Because there's something precious about life. Yeah. Life was made in the image of God. Amen. And God thought it was precious enough to come. And he said this, and often we forget it. He says, whatsoever you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me. Amen. Yeah. He looked over at that thief. 
He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Yes, a convicted criminal. Amen. And gave him an open door to heaven. Sure. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Right. He looked at that woman mm -hmm. taken in the very act of adultery, as filthy as that act was. Yes, amen. And they, by the law, his law, God's law, could have stoned her. But he looked at her and said, Woman, well, where are those thine accusers? Have to go back and then leave. Nay, Lord, no man. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sign no more. Aren't you glad? When he could have, he didn't. Yeah. Amen. See, God's law is it's it's unbending. But there's all kinds of all kinds of examples in the Old Testament of God's mercy. Yes. The Bible says judgment is a strange word. And mercy rejoiceth over judgment. God don't want to sin, and he doesn't. They go as intruders to this place called hell. The hell's had to enlarge yourself because people just won't heed God's word. Yeah. He, he's not going to do anything else. For no. He's not sending another Messiah. No. It's just that yeah. once was enough. He died once and for all. That's yeah. right. He sure did. It was hot out there today, this morning. My kids abandoned it. We had a plan. They were going to go out and help, and I was going to come out, get them started, and I was going to come to church. I work for about one Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Too hot. No. But I sure. can't imagine being, I mean, I feel for Caleb. Caleb lost about two or three sizes down in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> he only weighed 158 when he left here. He looked like an Ethiopian. <laughs> back there. They're having to resize his uniforms. But aren't you glad you don't have to go to hell? I, I read that about him like Josh talked about it. We mentioned him. You probably heard it 15 times already. He walks 30 minutes to go to church <laughs> in 100 degree weather. Wow. He says it's worth it. Yeah. Sometimes we think about things. If you're walking 30 minutes to go to church and from church, yeah. Yeah. we get to be with him for a couple of weeks coming up. So pray, pray for Caleb. Amen. I want so much, but he's a good little feller. I just want to see him say Yes, they do. I don't want to see him go to hell. That's right. I seen a lady today, and she looked at me, and she goes, What's your name? I said, Terry. She was Terry Brayton. <laughs> I said, Yeah. She took off her sunglasses. It was my uncle's daughter. I hadn't seen her in a long time. And I uh, talked to her a little bit. And She's got a daughter now, a teenager. Her name's Tony. Her daughter's Miranda. Met Miranda for the first time. You never know. Right. You never know. But it seems like when you think you're getting close on a couple, you got to lead somebody else in your life. Yeah, sure. You know, maybe you haven't thought of them in a while, Brother Gary. There's a lot of people out there need prayer. Let's pray for ourselves. Amen. God gave us a vision for the hell. I, I, I love we sing about heaven. I love singing about heaven. And I'm like, hey, the, the gold don't get me all that excited. But the fellowship, seeing Jesus and worship. Amen. Him, and being with loved ones. Amen. And being free. Amen. <laughs> all the sickness and all the stuff that drags people down. And, and seeing people, you know, my dad would be able to walk so far and he'd have to stoop down because his legs were hurting so bad. He'd stop and kind of squat down a little bit and then he'd rest and he'd get up and go again. And I remember my dad being strong, you know. The last time I seen him at a public function, he walked in and he looked like he just like like he was white as a ghost. And I'm like, man, I don't remember dad being that old, you know. It wasn't but a week or two later he passed. That's a sure. The Lord don't come. We're all going to pass by that door. Amen. Amen. We need to prepare. But not only that, we've only got a little bit of time to do what we got to do. Yeah. What Jesus told one of them, he said, what thou doest, do quickly. Because yeah. you know, uh, good intentions, I can't read anywhere in the Bible where they make it, make it through. We might have intended to go talk to that one or visit this one. 
suddenly the doors got shut and we left thinking we, we failed again. It'd be nice to get some of the plus column. Amen. Get some things done while it's still today. And then we've got so many we got convenience, we got phones, we can do everything on our phone just like that. But still, I think God wants us to go out and personally let people know face to face what Jesus means to us and what hell really is, what salvation is. And maybe we're not preaching the sermon all the time, Brother Gary, but just give them some, not only information, but a perspective and an evidence and a testimony. Sometimes just tell the truth about what you know. That's all, that's all a testimony is, is telling the truth about what you know. Amen. Praying about it and asking God to lead you and help you a long way. Amen. And asking God to prepare you. But I thought about all the things that rich man had once he went to hell, if he had just had them. A few days before, might have changed things. Amen. Amen. But forever, he's, he's down there. He's got his memory. Remember, he's, he's got his, his, his memory. Abraham told him, he said, Son, remember. He was able to remember. I think that's going to be the worst thing for to me, to be in hell and realize maybe I sat on that pew and God the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and the message was clear and I could have received it. But I told him not now. You see, you don't have to say not ever. Satan just wants you to put it off a little bit. Postpone. How many of them are in hell today if I just had one more minute? Yeah, amen. Just one more altar call, one more verse, I can make it right. And forever, eternity is sealed. That's all I've got. Brother Joel, you got anything tonight? Well, that's uh, Brother Dave, if you want to come and give a song tonight. Once my soul was astray from the heavenly way, I was wretched and vile. As could be, but my Savior in love gave me peace from above when he reached down his hand for me. When my Savior reached down for me, he had to reach way down for me. I was lost and undone without God or a son when my Savior reached down for me. Now my heart does rejoice when I hear His free voice and the tempest to thee I flee. But my Savior in love gave me peace from above when he reached down his hand for me. When my Savior reached down for me, he had to reach way down for me. I was lost and undone without God or His Son when my Savior reached down for me. Any words, anything on anyone's heart before we just speak? I remember a delivery about five years ago to a place on an airport highway to work. I walked in and there's a whole bunch of them. They had like the main little desk and they had like little cubicles all around it. And they were talking and they said, well, that's this guy right here. He said, he's a preacher. <laughs> and I said, what can I help you with? And they said, why would God throw somebody into hell? Amen. I said, God doesn't throw nobody into hell. No. You choose to go there. Amen. Man, you should see the rat scam. <laughs> They didn't want to hear it no more, but that's the honest guy truth. We make our own decisions in this life when we go yeah. our, our own direction. You know, I just thank God that I listened that night and cried out and heard me. Amen. 
you know, I, was, I, would, I would not be here today. The problem that I was on. Um, talk about tongue it takes me back to uh, uh, your knees. Uh, spend the time in my house and uh, learning the Bible and talking mostly with my wife. But, uh, here she has a daughter, 18, and I haven't seen her myself in years. But, you know, we don't know who our paths are across right. in, in this life. We don't. And, and, you know, we need to be ready to be able to tell people about Jesus. Anyone else? Dad, I'm glad to be here today, and I'm glad you preached about hell. There's not a lot of preachers who preach about it, and uh, already don't want to hear it. But uh, we, a lot of, we need to hear it. Sinners need to hear it. More than, more than uh, saved people, sinners need to hear it. Because uh, it will draw them to the altar. I was said the fear of the Lord and began to listen. Anyone else? 